Neurology quiz number 71. What is the Pomps syndrome? The Pomps syndrome is a rare paraneoplastic syndrome due to an underlying plasma cell neoplasm. Pomps stands for the condition's five major signs and symptoms, which include polyneuropathy, organomegaly, endocrinopathy, monoclonal gammopathy, and skin changes. The condition occurs 1.5 times more frequently in men than in women, and the typical age of onset is in adults in their 50s. It is also known as the crow fucase syndrome. Criteria have been established for diagnosis. The diagnosis requires both major, both mandatory major criteria and at least one other major criterion and one minor criterion. The mandatory major criteria are polyneuropathy, which is typically demyelinating, and monoclonal plasma cell proliferative disorder, which is almost always lambda light chains. Other major criteria out of which one is required include Castleman disease, sclerotic bone lesions, and vascular endothelial growth factor elevation. Minor criteria out of which one is required include organomegaly, extravascular volume overload, endocrinopathy, skin changes which include hyperpigmentation, hypertrichosis, glomerulid hemangiomata, acrocyanosis, flushing and white nails or leukonychia, and others include papilledema and thrombocytosis and polycythemia. Major criteria A. Polyneuropathy Neuropathy is common at the onset of the disease and may be the only feature at presentation. It often begins distally in the lower extremities with weakness and sensory loss and can progress quickly to a polyradiculoneuropathy with proximal and distal weakness and areflexia. Distal weakness is often severe with distal leg atrophy and foot drop. Pain is common and is a useful feature in differentiating poems from CIDP. Many patients can quickly become wheelchair or bed bound due to weakness and pain. Nerve conduction studies reveal a primarily demyelinating length dependent sensory motor neuropathy or a diffuse polyradicular neuropathy. The demyelination is often uniform throughout the nerve and conduction block and temporal dispersion are uncommon but can occur. Features of axonal loss may also be seen especially in the lower extremities. CSF analysis shows elevated protein but a normal cell count. In some series at presentation, 60% of patients were initially misdiagnosed as CIDP. POMS should be suspected when the patient diagnosed as CIDP does not respond to CIDP treatment. This table shows a comparison of POMS syndrome neuropathy to CIDP. Some of the important differentiating features are that Pohm's neuropathy is often painful. In addition to showing features of demyelination, it also shows axonal loss and compound muscle action potentials are significantly attenuated or absent. Uh, the neuropathy is much worse in the lower limbs compared to the upper in Pohm's. Intermediate nerve segments are most often affected in the POMS syndrome, while proximal and terminal nerve segments are most affected in CIDP. And elevated VEGF levels are seen in POMS, whereas in CIDP, in a minority of cases, antibodies to the paranodal proteins can be seen. B. Plasma cell dyscrasia. The monoclonal protein in Pohm's syndrome is restricted to lambda light chains in more than 95% of the cases and can be identified on serum protein electrophoresis and or immunofixation. C. Castleman disease. This is a rare lymphoproliferative disorder which can be associated with the Pohm's syndrome. Between 10 to 30% of Pohm's syndrome patients have associated Castleman disease. Some patients with Castleman disease can have neuropathy without monoclonal plasma cell disorder and should not be classified as the POM syndrome. D. Sclerotic bone lesions. POM syndrome is associated with predominantly osteosclerotic bone lesions, also referred to as osteosclerotic myeloma. Lesions are commonly found in the pelvis, the thoracic and lumbar vertebrae, the ribs, but can also occur in the sternum, clavicle, scapula, long bones. They are often multiple. Lesions can be detected by whole body CT. 
PET CT as well as technetium bone scintigraphy. Rarely the lesions may be lytic. E vascular endothelial growth factor. Elevated VEGF is highly specific for this condition and is believed to be involved in the pathophysiology of systemic features including organomegaly and volume overload. Serum levels reflect the disease activity, falling with treatment and rising with disease progression or relapse. These figures show osteosclerotic bone lesions in the vertebrae as well as in the pelvis. Minor criteria A. Organomegaly. This includes hepatomegaly, comma, splenomegaly, and lymphadenopathy. Imaging like CT has higher sensitivity in identifying organomegaly than clinical examination. B. Endocrinopathy. Up to 80% of patients have endocrinopathy, and 50% of patients can have multiple endocrinopathy. Hypogonadism is common, and other disorders include thyroid dysfunction, diabetes, hyperprolactinemia, and gynecomastia. Abnormalities in calcium metabolism and less commonly adrenal insufficiency. C. Skin changes. These are reported in 90 to 100 percent of patients. Hyperpigmentation and hemangiomas are the commonest. Other skin changes include hypertrichosis, skin thickening, facial lipoatrophy. Vascular type skin changes include levido reticularis, flushing, acrocyanosis, and Raynaud phenomenon. Nail changes include leukonychia or white nails and clubbing. This slide shows typical skin lesions of the bone syndrome. A demonstrates multiple glomerular hemangiomata throughout the trunk and upper limbs. B shows a close-up of glomerular hemangiomata. C shows peripheral edema and skin thickening. D shows hypertrichosis or increased hair growth in the upper limbs. And E shows acrocyanosis of the feet. Other minor criteria, D papilledema, can be seen up in up to 50% of patients. Pathogenic factors include elevated CSF protein as well as increased vascular permeability from elevated BEGF levels. E extravascular volume overload and common manifestations include edema as well as pleural and pericardial effusions as well as ascites. F thrombocytosis, both thrombocytosis and polycythemia are common. Diagnostic workup for this condition would include EMG and nerve conduction studies, CSF analysis, paraproteinemia screening, VGF levels, whole body CT scan, bone marrow biopsy. Other tests required are a complete metabolic profile, endocrinopathy screen, CBC and clotting profile, etc. This slide shows papilledema as well as white nails or leukonychia and cyanosis, which are minor criteria. Management depends upon distribution of the disease. For localized disease, which is defined as up to three discrete bone lesions and no evidence of clonal plasma cells on bone marrow biopsy, treatment is with localized radiotherapy. For diffuse disease, which is defined as more than three bone lesions or clonal plasma cells on bone marrow biopsy, patients receive systemic treatment, which includes chemotherapy or autologous stem cell transplant. This slide shows the treatment algorithm for POM syndrome, including chemotherapeutic agents used for systemic treatment.